funny how we we pick these. Uh, it, it's there's a lot of planning that goes into it, and then of course at the at the last possible moment we decide that there's something better, and we completely change what we're about to do. And this episode was actually not much different than those. Um, so it actually I'll I'll, I'll kind of tell you a little bit about so basically what we talk about on the show is everything as it relates to water coming into your home not the water that leaves the home because that's nasty and that's just not something we want we want to mess with right but if it's water coming in uh, that is definitely what we specialize in and it doesn't matter whether you're on a well or whether you're on uh, city water um, we we fix it all um, but as a uh, we're a Local uh, local office of a, of a larger dealership that uh, we're actually the largest Connecticut dealership in the world. Um, uh, hoorah! We uh, <laughs> took that title last uh, last year. It's been uh, it's been one of those tight races, but um, we're very very proud to be the largest dealership of the Connecticut product, which is the only one out there that specializes in non electric water treatment technology. Because water and electricity just sometimes doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, what? Yeah, imagine that. That's crazy. So we try to keep the electricity out of the water. Uh, but uh, we've got a team over here, and uh, we do a lot of our our, our marketing, our local marketing, um, pretty much uh, office by office. And that's because every market is different, and we like to get to know our, our clients and customers. And, and if you don't, you know, if you don't know your audience, then uh, you really have a tough, a tough uphill battle. Yeah. Uh, so I was actually on a, uh, a marketing webinar trying to learn the, the, the new latest and greatest uh, things that are out there with some of the freaky things that uh, like AI and stuff like that. But Ooh. they had a bunch of guest speakers on this uh, on this webinar. And one of them was uh, one of them was talking about basically the uh, the best brand marketing is to have the best product. And uh, and then and then, you know, somebody else would say, well, they're you got sometimes you got the same product um, and it's all about the marketing and he and this person actually gave an example of uh, soap for example and said yeah soap's basically all the same it's just you know marketing and, and brand hype and then somebody else jumped on um, and uh, and actually said I'm gonna completely disagree with that last comment because he said soap is not soap um, it's different, and he kind of went on to, to talk about how uh, soaps are, are kind of formulated different down to the level of, almost of ethnicity, uh, as, as crazy as that sounded, but it was actually true. Um, and, you know, certain, certain soaps work better with certain, uh, certain groups of people because right. uh, there's, there's genetic skin conditions that are more prevalent in certain communities. Right. So... It made me. I'm of course watching this webinar, and I'm on mute, and I'm like screaming at the, <laughs> screaming at the, at the monitor. I'm like, no, it's it really hasn't doesn't have that much to do with the soap. It's your water. So it made me realize uh, because uh, a lot of water, uh, a lot of skin conditions are the actual result of bad water uh, coming into the house. So I was like, what better time than to go ahead and. You know, I didn't realize how, how big of a deal soap was until I was part of witnessed this huge debate uh, live, which was pretty awkward. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, so so the soaps. Uh, today we're going to talk about the skin health, and what I mean by that is that the skin, and when we're when we're out in a uh, in a home with a customer. One of the things that, that we talk about is, of course, the benefits of having a water softener because that's one of the main things that almost everybody needs. And uh, so there's a lot of different water treatment techniques out there. And there's some, 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 some things that claim that they're going to give you soft water, but they really don't. Um, some of them are scammy, like the magic wire, um, which what it, is what is the magic wire? <laughs> so, okay, so the magic wire, the magic wire is one of these things, uh, and I'm not. It's not really the magic wire, but I'm going to go ahead. That's not the name because I probably would get sued if I actually named some of the names that it goes by. But you're going to love this. It's got a, it's got this uh, this electrical box that plugs into your wall, 
and the main pipe that brings your water into your house, doesn't matter what this pipe is made of. It could be made out of galvanized steel, could be made out of lead, could be made out of copper or PEX or PVC. Mm. Any material will do. But the main pipe is somewhere close to this electrical box. And this electrical box plugs in, and there's a wire that comes out of it. And this wire goes out of the box and wraps around your pipe 64 times. Now, it's apparently very important that it wraps 64 times. 64, not 63. Yeah, not, not 65. Got to be 64. Yeah. Because I guess the magic only happens on that 64th <laughs> wrap. But it wraps on the outside of the pipe, so it never even touches the water. And then it goes back to the box. So you've got a, a, a wire that goes out and returns back to this box. And you plug it in the wall, and this little, this little light indicator shows green. And some of them are really fancy, and they'll, like, you know, ebb and flow and make it look like it's sending out some super special frequency. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, these things supposedly fix all of your water ailments without ever touching the water just by wrapping around it. So, yeah, we... You know what that kind of reminds <laughs> me of? Um, there are some, like just companies overseas that'll take like those uh it looks like kind of like um you know a little charger like a usb charger you'd plug into your cigarette lighter in your car yeah 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 um companies will <clears throat> make these and it just has like a little a small little motherboard in it that turns on an led that's all it is and, and they'll claim this saves you like three Three to four more <laughs> miles per gallon. And like yes. you're, you're just plugging in uh, an LED yeah. light into your cigarette lighter. So that's exactly <laughs> what this is. It's a, it, you go. Oh, it must be working because it it says it works. Mm -hmm. And it says like yeah. Some of them have little uh, little words next to the light that say uh, conditioning, and and then it, it's a green light, of course. Right. Red makes people freak out. But uh, yeah, the only time it changes is if the uh, the diagnostic fails on it, but it doesn't do anything. We right. refer to it as the magic wire. And um, the sad thing is there's a lot of people that get suckered into it because it sounds believable. They have a, they have this somewhat explain, somewhat scientific explanation about, you know, what's happening. Right. The reality is it doesn't work. It, uh, they put it in and the really good shysters or I'm trying to think of a, of a nice gentle name. But a lot of these guys will put this thing in, and they'll also put it in, because it's usually on city water, which has chlorine. Mm -hmm. They'll put it in with a carbon tank. And then the customer, of course, you know, it doesn't do anything for the hardness in the water. But wow. at least it takes out the chlorine, and then they feel different in the shower. Because uh -huh. chlorine dries your skin out. Right. So it's that placebo effect. They go, oh, it must be working. I feel it. It feels different in the shower. We, we tear those things out all the time, and it just Jeez. infuriates me because I see a lot of them are, uh, are folks that are either desperate or they're, or they're just, you know, maybe some of them are up in age, and they were taken advantage of. So right. Kind of like, oh, this newfangled technology. Uh, yeah, exactly. It must work. And the yeah. guys that sell this stuff are, uh, well, let's just say they're, they're less than truthful. Yeah, they're less than truthful. That's <laughs> Something about timeshare comes into mind, but uh, hey. we'll stay out of that rain, that realm. So skin, yeah. So so anyway, <laughs> so that's the magic wire scam. But then there's another out there, um, and and it's not a scam. It's it's scammy how they present it, but mm. they call them saltless water softeners, and it doesn't actually soften the water. It mm. just dissolves stuff into the water um, and makes the water kind of react differently because you're then you are actually changing the composition of the water because uh, it's going through some uh, some media that that can do all sorts of bizarre things depending on on what's in it right. uh, but the the reason i bring up those two things is that they are supposed cures for hard water but neither one of them actually gives you soft water uh, the only way to get soft water only ways actually to get soft water is with a water softener, um, which uses a salt, uh, whether it's a sodium chloride or a potassium chloride, to, uh, to, to do an, it's called an ion exchange process. And what it ends up doing is uh, the hardness that comes into the, in through the water. Now I, I should back up and say, 
85% of people in the U.S. have some degree of hard water. So if you're listening to this, there's almost a nine, nine out of 10 of you know exactly what I'm talking about mm-hmm. uh, with hard water. It leaves, it leaves whitish deposits, usually around the, you know, the toilet water line, things like that. It's like if you have like a, a tile shower, like in the grout, you'll see it in there as well. Absolutely. Yeah. It leaves deposits pretty much everywhere. And it, it's, it's dissolved calcium and trace amounts of magnesium that are in the water, but a water softener it uh, the, the, what makes it unique and different is that the the guts of a water softener actually kind of well it's a it's a material called resin and I'm trying to 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 simplify it the resin that's in a softener kind of looks like plastic sand and it's got a uh, it's got a negative permanent charge put on it and it's given a bath in salt water when it's when it's first made and the sodium chloride which is salt, when it dissolves in the water, the sodium is floating around and it's positive. So basically the, the resin ha- grabs as much of the sodium as it possibly can and then it gets turned loose and your water is, uh, is basically pushed through it and it will grab the calcium and the magnesium out of your water and it'll release the little bit of sodium in its place. And that's why they call it the ion exchange. I know we've covered that on a, a, a previous episode, but I, I try to blast through that as quick as I can. Because if you understand how it works, that's the only way. If you're The only way to actually take care of the calcium and the magnesium is to take it out of the water. Mm-hmm. And a softener is the only way that does that. Those other, the, the magic wire doesn't do anything. It's still there. And the, uh, the saltless water conditioners, uh, we can test them every single time. Uh, afterwards to prove it but they don't do anything for the for the the calcium or the magnesium that's still in the water so pretty much if you have hard water your only real option is a water softener Uh, but the only other way to take it out is to purify the water and uh, that's done with typically reverse osmosis which we also do but it's a much different process and uh, that's for another show but uh, pretty much I had to set the stage for the whole episode here because we're talking about skin health. And really, if you have dry skin or flat hair, that's another one that I like to throw out there because I know that uh, that if my wife's hair does not look the way she wants it to look, it's going to be a bad day for me. (laughs) So it's important that you take the calcium out of the water for, for how your hair reacts because it can weigh it down and make it flat. Um, but it's very, it's mostly important on your, on your skin health. Um, because think of your skin as the largest organ of the human body. That is essentially what it is. It is. It's just the only one that's on the outside of our bodies. Um, it's kind of like, I like to compare it to a big leather couch. (laughs) And <laughs> we're that big leather couch. And like anything that's leather, if you don't condition it periodically, it's going to get dry and it's actually going to crack. And that's why if you take care of leather, it literally will almost last you forever. Mm-hmm. If you don't take care of leather, it's going to crack and then you'll find it on the side of the side of the road for free. Um, so our skin needs to be conditioned and we've got just... I don't know what the exact number is, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of oil glands throughout our entire body. Yes. And they release oils, as the name kind of sounds, and those oils are what keeps our skin conditioned. So you got all, you got this great mechanism already built into every one of our bodies that is designed to give us, you know, uh, moist skin Um, because moist skin creates that barrier that we need to fend off uh, bacteria and, and, and things that are going to try to get through that organ that we've got. So if it's compromised by cracking, then it's not very effective at its, at its job. Uh, so the calcium and the magnesium deposits block these oil glands. Um, and if you can imagine your oil glands are blocking, it's uh it's not going to be a perfect conditioning. 
So then you start to get sometimes patchy uh, because sometimes the, the oil glands are slightly different sizes in certain parts of the body and they're more prone for, for clogging. But if they get clogged up, they, they can't release the oil evenly. You get, you get dry spots. And then, of course, dry spots leads to uh, skin conditions that uh, a lot of folks just kind of lump in under dry skin. Um, so you, you want your oil glands to do their job. They can't do the job because there's calcium, magnesium in hard water. So you want to take those, that stuff out of there. Um, the other thing that, uh, that tends to make it even a little bit more complicated is, uh, is that we all at, at some point use soap to, to take baths and showers, which we learned recently is not all the same. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, and the, so, so the soaps, they can actually leave deposits on your skin as well. So it's a combination of your glands are getting plugged up and you're getting this layer of, of foreign stuff on your skin mm. that doesn't get rinsed off because hard water does a terrible job of rinsing. So you end up with clogged up pores and a chemical on your skin that, that the two of those things can be, you know, they can inflame the skin. They can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, and really the, the water softener can be, in a lot of cases, a miracle cure. Yeah. Uh, we we hear it literally weekly where folks, they didn't even realize the, the true benefits of having soft water until they had it in their own home. Um, but we're getting close to a break, so I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of let everybody know that if this is something that uh, before you, you know, Forget, go ahead and write down 87760-WATER, or you can visit us on the web at kineticorichmond.com. Um, you can find our YouTube channel. There's some entertaining YouTube videos out there under uh, the Kinetico Richmond also. Uh, we've got some podcasts that are coming out uh, this week, if not already. And uh, we have a full team that is dedicated to, uh, to fixing water. And we will be right back after this break. Welcome back. In case you've just tuned in, this is the Water Guy Show, and I'm Paul, your Connecticut Water Guy, and we've got... Ethan Bodsford. <laughs> he's a little slow on the cue, but he's here. Just a little bit. It, it it took me a second in my peripheral to see your finger pointing at me. I'm like, oh, that's me. That's, that's my you. cue. Yeah, well, we <laughs> are back, and we're charged up for the second part of this episode, uh, which is skin health and a water softener. Skin. Skin health. Yeah. Skin health. So uh, before the break, we talked a little bit about basically you dry skin is one of the biggest things that we see with uh, uh, with hard water. And the only way to fix that is to take the hardness out of the water, which can only be done with a water softener, a real water softener, not a scammy magic wire or uh, a saltless system that will be effective for, for certain things in the house, but doesn't do a doggone thing to protect your skin health. So a water softener is the only way to fix that. Um, <clears throat> we talked about the uh, uh, the fact that the calcium in, and the magnesium in hard water leaves deposits that block your oil glands. And, and when your oil glands in your skin get blocked, you don't get to condition that, that, uh, that entire skin organ that we have covering our whole bodies trying to protect us. Um, not to mention the fact that hard water does not rinse well and it leaves soapy residue, uh, surfactant deposits is the technical name, uh, on your skin and in your laundry. Mm -hmm. So this is one of those things. I love, I find that telling true stories goes a lot longer than just trying to read some you know, gibberish out of a book that will bore anybody to tears. Yeah. So I've run into some things because we, I've been me personally, I've been doing this over eight years. Um, and Early on, I had a customer um, who, who called me up, and he was just frantic. Um, he's, <laughs> I remember it was like yesterday. He said, I can take a shower, 
And 10 minutes after I get out of the shower, I look like a dead man. My skin gets so dry. Wow. Yeah, I remember thinking, oh, he needs some help immediately. Yeah. Get some lotion. Yeah. So, super nice guy. Yeah. I get over to, to his house, and uh, and he's on uh, the north, kind of the mannequin Midlothian type area. I know exactly where you're talking about. Oh, yeah. 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 That area. <clears throat> so, he had a combination of chlorine, cl- uh, ammonia, and hard water. Oh. And he already had a carbon tank in there. So, his... his uh, his, car, his his chlorine and his uh, his ammonia levels were were already being addressed, but still that wasn't enough uh, for his. He had extreme eczema. I uh, can't remember. There was some specific name for it, but it kind of surprised me because the doctor, the the uh, the skin doctor that that of course you know the experts. Not all of them realize, for some reason, that the water could be contributing or making your skin even worse um, than... He he was dosed up with a bunch of creams and medications, but the root, one of the root causes of the problem wasn't actually being addressed. So, hard water, and this is where it gets interesting, because he tells me, he says, Paul, I, uh, I need a softener. I, I look horrendous. And he's like, the problem is my wife hates a softener. So you can't just soften the his part of the his and her house. Right, right. <laughs> so so it, w- it was really bizarre. I, uh, it's actually one of our, if you go way back in our reviews, we've got like 187 five-star reviews right now. It's one of the earlier ones if that helps. But uh, he went into detail to, to kind of tell this this exact story. Um, but his wife absolutely refused to have a water softener. She liked having flat hair. That, <laughs> I, I know. Uh... I know. I, it's like, I don't even want to go down the road of, you, <laughs> she knows how she wants her hair, and I'm not going to mm-hmm. change that. Don't mess with that. But his skin was so horrifically bad that it would just peel. Uh, I mean, it was the driest. It was... It was the most extreme case I'd seen. So I had to help him out. And normally we, we don't have the ability to, uh, to, to, you know, to turn on soft water in just certain areas. So it was kind of bizarre. I, I, I worked up this temporary water softener tank and I put it in his shower so that all of the water came out of the shower head. And then I routed it down into this, this tank, which happened to be black. Um, it was about waist high. So this, he's, He's showering with these hoses that are connected to this black tank in his shower. Then it went back up to the shower head so that he could take a shower and only his shower would be running through the softener. Huh. And it wouldn't run forever because it can't, can't, it has to use salt to clean itself after a certain number of gallons. But we used this as a trial to see if this was going to help his condition. And he called me like a day later and he's like, oh my gosh, I love Darth Vader. He, <laughs> He named it Darth Vader because it was <laughs> it was in his shower and it looked like a little Darth Vader. Um, he's like, I want it, but I'm still stuck. What do I do uh, with my wife? And he's like, and the other problem is, he's like, I feel wonderful as soon as I get out of the shower. But then I dry off with the towel and I get all dried out again. And he's like, what I think is going on is my towels are being washed in the hard water. So... I said, tell you what, give me, a, I'm not going to judge, just give me a bag full of all of your towels, the towels you want to use, and your, your clothes that you want to put on. So I didn't look, I just washed it. I took it to my house because, of course, I have good water. Right. So I took all of his clean clothes. I mean, he didn't give me dirty clothes, but he gave me clean clothes and towels, and I washed them in my water, and I brought them back to him. Mm-hmm. I said, so let's, let's see what the shower and then out of the shower you clean yourself off with uh with a, a truly clean towel and put truly clean clothes on what that does to your condition and after that like literally all it took was the very next time he showered he called me up he said we got to we got to put a softener in he's like my wife she's going to have to have flat hair <laughs> so we did that because it made such an impact the the residue on his clothes and towels was still enough to irritate his skin so wow. badly. So, so it was whenever the laundry gets washed, the, so we put a softener in 
And we did it in such a way that you can turn it on and you can turn it off because they have a tankless water heater. So it's not like it stores up a bunch of water. Right. So when she's take, taking a shower, the water softener gets turned off. And so she gets the hard water because that's how she loves her hair. But all the other stuff, the doing of the laundry and um, everything else in the house, that's when the softener gets turned back on. So everybody's happy. And his skin, he tells me that his skin is like 80% better. Wow. So it's not a miracle, but compared to what he was dealing with before, he was just overjoyed. Sounds pretty darn close to a miracle. Yeah. I mean. That's that's the biggest success story that I can really relate to over and over again. And we right. had to do some some crazy stuff to really dial it in and make sure that it was, the only difference was the water. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that was that was my cool story on uh, the trial Darth Vader unit. <laughs> um, and if you're listening out there, uh, we love having you as part of the family. Uh, so, something else that can impact the your body's ability to uh, to keep itself hydrated. So there's there's some technical stuff. Uh, they've identified. They call it TUL, T E W L. And uh, it stands for transepidermal water loss. It's a fancy word for your skin's going to dry out. <laughs> so it's basically a rating scale uh, that indicates eczema susceptibility. And eczema is just a, uh, it's, a it's, it's the, something that, it's, it's the AD, the atopic dermatitis, is what eczema is also, uh, basically, that's what it's really known as. Uh, so that's enough nerding out on that. But if you have the TEWL um, and you're you're drying out, then that indicates that you are susceptible to eczema. And anybody that's got eczema knows it's kind of a an itchy red red rash. Um, but yeah, so so there's a way of testing how much water loss your skin has after certain things happen to it in a scientific environment. And so what they have found is that the alkaline water, um, high alkaline water, if you shower in that, that's actually bad for your skin. That's it's not bad, but it's not, it's not good for your skin. Your skin doesn't like that as much as it likes something that's low in alkalinity. Right. And the funny thing is, is that there are some, uh, so, so alkalinity is basically the, the, how well it handles how how anchored the ph is i'm trying to keep it really simple here but if you have a lot of alkalinity then your ph doesn't get moved around too terribly much if you have really low alkalinity your ph can fluctuate so uh, there's a big kick about alkaline water for drinking but that's a whole nother episode in itself but the uh, when you have chlorine in the water and hard water like we have around here there are some some companies that are that have put in water softeners without dechlorinators in front of them, and that's just amateur hour because <laughs> chlorine eats water softeners. It's kind of you put it in like that. Either you you just didn't know any better, or you know that you're gonna do this because you're gonna have to replace that water softener, um, which isn't doing your customer any favors, but. What they have found is that chlorine in soft water actually raises the alkalinity a little bit. So uh, if you have city water and just a softener, you're creating a more alkaline water environment, which is actually not as good for your skin as just leaving it the way that it was. Uh, High pH water is kind of akin to the alkaline water. It's not the same thing, but usually they kind of hang out together. Uh, But high pH water is also bad for your skin. Your skin doesn't really like that too much. Um, your skin really actually, according to the studies, wants to take showers and baths in acidic water, which uh, hmm. it, it, it kind of surprised me too until yeah. I dug that up. I'm like, oh, maybe it's it, it, it just likes the acidic environment much better than, than the basic one. Um, the problem is that you're not going to find acidic water in a lot of, uh, of houses because the plumbing system doesn't like acidic water. 
Right. So usually like the cities will go ahead and, and keep the water more neutral uh, so that it doesn't eat the inside of the, of the distribution system all the way out over to, to where it's getting delivered uh, for obvious reasons. You don't want holes in the pipes. Um, but turns out that really acidic water is a little bit better for you in, in terms of, uh, of bathing for skin health. Um, so pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, hard water also definitely impacts the ability to properly dissolve soaps. So this is a, a kind of a cool thing. If anybody is at home and you're anywhere where you have a uh, liquid soap or shampoo, usually liquid soaps are the, are the best example. Uh, they stop putting the ingredients on most of them, which is kind of surprising. But most of most of the time, you can still find the ingredients on there. And if you were to kind of open up like dish detergent or hand soap or something like that, you will find that because 85% of America has hard water and the, the, uh, the soap industry, I should have looked up the exact number, but it's multi, multi-billion dollar uh, soaps every single year. Uh, they don't want to go ahead and, and impact their sales. So what they end up doing is they start putting additives into their liquid soaps, hmm. artificial water softeners. And if you're going, if you found your bottle of, uh, of soap by now, if you look at the ingredient list, now most people know that the very first ingredient is the one that is the most inside the bottle. Right. And it goes down usually from, you know, from the most all the way to the least. And the very first thing on every single bottle that everybody's looking at right now, unless it's one of those all natural soaps, is water. So that huge bottle that you just paid anywhere from 7 to $20 for has about 80% water in it. Yep. So why would you do that that, right there's actually like laundry commercials about that where they say you know go with the pods because the the big the big jug that makes it feel like you got so much more is actually like 80 percent water Um, but it's the same thing with hand soaps so you can do uh you you kind of look at it as i I don't want to get a water softener i'll just buy soap and that's really what they do when they're trying to market this stuff to you but the first ingredient is water, and the second ingredient is the artificial water softener. Um, and if you're looking at your bottle and it says sodium laureth sulfate or some variation of that, that is actually the chemical water softener. So there were some studies done on this. They call it SLS for short, the sodium laureth sulfate. And it's, it's one of those things. It, it's just an additive. You really don't need it. Right. Um, and in most cases you know less additives is better uh and this is one of those it's not a bad thing if you're using it and you have a water softener because what ends up happening is the 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 sodium laureth sulfate actually rinses clean with soft water because soft water actually rinses almost everything clean that's one of the huge benefits uh kind of like the darth vader story my soft water didn't have anything to do with the the detergents that I was using. It was the fact that soft water rinses residues out of, uh, out of laundry items far better as well as as showering and and basically cleaning anything. But, uh, but basically that, that sodium lauryl sulfate will rinse pretty well if you already have soft water, but if you have soft water, then you don't need the sodium lauryl sulfate. So it's kind of like just now that hopefully we've been able to open some eyes if you have a water softener, you can actually get some more um, more all natural soaps because those those additives are just not good. And if you have hard water and you're using it, you may get a great amount of suds because, of course, they put this artificial water softener in there. Mm-hmm. But the hard water leaves the SLS residue on your skin, which can also be an irritant. Yeah. So it's uh. You're darned if you do and you're darned if you don't type yeah. thing. So you're paying for stuff that you don't need. And uh, and without good water, it may actually be in interfering with your skin health. So it uh, looks like we're blazing through this second oh, yeah. episode here. And uh, 
we're gonna be back don't go away we still got one more one more part to go but we're gonna take a quick break stick around we're gonna be back with more of the water guys show and uh 87760 water or Connecticut richmond you can reach us and we will uh answer any questions that you may have thank you Welcome back. In case you just tuned in, this is the Water Guy Show, and I'm Paul, your Connecticut Water Guy, and we've got Ethan over here. Yes, sir. I'm not going to miss my cue nope. this time. No cue missing. Um, we are in our final section of the uh, the skin health and a water softener uh, episode. Skin health. Skin health. Yeah. Yep. And some of the things that uh, that can be impacted by uh, hard water. Or you can have dry skin, you can have acne, you can have psoriasis, you can have eczema. Uh, those are, and you can have flat hair. Um, flat hair. <laughs> the worst out of the bunch. Yes, flat hair is, for me, is not a problem, but uh, <laughs> that's not really something I focus in on too much. But yes, flat hair can be devastating to, uh, to some folks. Uh, but we've got a bunch of things that could be improved just by taking care of the hardness that it, that is already in 85% of the water that's out there. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I love kind of telling some stories. And uh, there's one in particular that I'd really love to share. And he's probably going to kill me. But uh, one of one of my uh, specialists, trying to keep it as vague as I possibly can, started with me several, many years ago, actually, about four years ago. And when he came to me, he really didn't know anything about water. It was one of those, um, he just kind of heard we were, were looking to grow the business, and uh, he, he kind of knew somebody that knew somebody, and I said, sure, let's sit down and talk. So when I, when I first met him, he drank from the tap at home and uh, didn't know any better, didn't really even think about it. Right. And had a family, wife and kids, and uh, up in Mechanicsville, I'll just go ahead and I'll just say it that way. And was up there for years, probably 10 years. And uh, his wife had some dry skin and and, uh, and psoriasis things. And they just figured, you know, that's just part of life. Some people have this. Yeah. Uh, which is actually the AD, atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, uh, two, between 2 and 10% of adults have this. Interesting thing is that children... There's 15 to 30% of children that have this. So, obviously, as we get bigger and older, we become more tolerant in many cases. Yeah. Um, but kids are really susceptible to this stuff. Yeah. And most people don't even know it. So, they just figured it's just one of those things. Go to the dermatologist, get the special creams, and, and life goes on. Well, I ended up uh, realizing that he was a great fit and uh, the super... Super good person, and, and you know, uh, everything about him was great, so we hired him. And like everybody that, that comes in our door and, and turns into uh, one of the team, he became more and more freaked out about water. And uh, the more you know, the scarier it is type thing. Yeah. So he, uh, he quickly established himself, and we put a system in his own house. And he, it was like a miracle. His, uh, his wife's eczema complete, pretty much completely disappeared. Um, acne problems had, uh, had gone away, and uh, everything was great. And for the last couple of years, uh, actually like three years now, he's been loving life and now completely understands the difference between having hard water and mixed with chlorine and, and other nasty stuff that's in there versus having good water. Uh, fast forward. Now he's in the process of, uh, of, of building a house almost done, but he's in kind of like a temporary situation. And so now he doesn't have water treatment again. Oh, no. So he's had to go backwards and all of the problems that were, uh, that were plaguing the family up until he got his first water system are all back. So it's kind of one of those, he's like, Oh my gosh, you just, I, I can't, emphasize enough how important water treatment really is yeah uh, he's like we're we're back dealing with the whole dry skin thing and and, and acne um it's it's just 
terrible. So he's just chomping at the bit to get to, to get his new <laughs> new system in there. Yeah. But that's uh that's an interesting true story about literally one of one of the team who yeah, he's probably gonna be really furious with me for even given that much detail, but you know what? You got to take one for the team. If we can, if we can help some folks out there by sharing the story, and they realize that you know what? That's me. I've got that same situation. Mm-hmm. Um, then it's worth it. Uh, so we talked a little bit about some stats, like the fifteen to thirty percent of children are affected by that uh, atopic dermatitis, which is pretty bad because not only is it a nuisance for kids, but some kids can be mean, and, you know, if somebody has a, a rash or something, they can get picked on, and life just isn't as good as it could be if, if you didn't have that kind of thing. Right. Um, but it can get worse because the, a lot of the, um, uh, the scarring that happens as a result of some of this extreme dry skin can be permanent and last into adulthood. Yeah. So if there's something that you can do to keep your kids um, – you know, safe. I'm sure every parent that's listening would would do that. Uh, but if your child has eczema, dry skin, you know, definitely give us a call. We want to at least test the water. There may be something else going on, obviously, but uh, you 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 owe it to to the family to at least get it checked out. So it's worth a shot, Absolutely. right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's not even one of those things that uh, that we we even charge for, believe it or not. Really. Yeah, it's a it's a free consultation in most cases. Um, just give us a call, see if you qualify. Eight seven seven six zero water, or you can find us if it's after hours. You can always go to our website, do a little bit of digging around, and no pressure. Just check us out, Richmond dot com, and uh, Kinetico is K I N E T I C O, like kinetic energy with an O on the end. Uh, Kinetico Richmond dot com. And uh, you can check out some of our YouTube videos. You'll actually see me on most of them at uh, the Kinetico Richmond. Uh, if you search for that on YouTube, you'll find it. But, uh, yeah, that's that's one of those things. Take care of your kids. We don't want scarring to, to be a, a part of their life. And, uh, uh, you know, happy kids are, are just better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's actually some... Uh, some studies that have been done. I found this thing and none of, none of the research that we did today was from companies that sell water softeners because they're all going to just regurgitate whatever's out there uh, to try to sell their product. Everything that I, that I came up with for this show, I wanted it to be not like sale, you know, not salesy. So it all came from medical sources, right? These were all dermatologists and, uh, and, and medical uh, national eczema.org, for example, scientifically cited sources. Bingo. Exactly. Yeah. So I didn't want this to be just a big old infomercial. Right. Cause that's not what, that's not what this is designed to be, but the national eczema or national eczema.org um, actually is, is in the process of doing studies. Uh, you're going to love it. The name of it is called softer and it stands for softened water for eczema prevention. Oh, wow. And I don't know how they got softer out of, it ends in a P. But anyway, they, they're they doing this study, and it is studying the risk of eczema in babies. So they're trying to figure out early on, are babies like predetermined to eczema? Right. And it's exciting because if you can head off problems, you know, at an early age, because if it's a problem that's genetic, that's one thing. But if... The study comes back and says, well, most kids are fine. It must be something environmental. Then we know that the 85% of people that have hard water, that's probably a big reason why most of the children have eczema and dry skin. And uh, so a lot of po- folks that are listening are probably wondering, I, I may have piqued your interest a little bit about, you know, what do I have to do? Do I have hard water? Do I need a water softener? How do I find one of these things? Well, the first step is obviously you need to get your water tested to find out if you have it because there are certain folks out there that don't have hard water. And uh, if you don't have hard water, we will definitely be able to figure that out. And then if you have other issues going on, we can we can address those as well. But uh, a water softener is one of those things that if you don't have the testing done, you don't really know 
what the right size would be for your particular house because it there's flow rates and there's you know, how big is the unit is it going to fit um we ch we just yesterday had one that uh, we're all planning on putting it in and there was no room underneath the house and there was no room in the house or in the garage so this one was going to go in a shed that was adjacent the customer was actually going to get a shed you know one of those uh like the rubber made uh, sheds that you can get at Lo Home Depot or Lowe's and uh, that's great for housing equipment like right next to your house but not actually like part of the house mm -hmm. and he picked this stuff up and shame on us for not verifying exactly what he put in because <laughs> he put in concrete and uh, underneath it and it was all done up nice and we showed up and it was too short <laughs> oh no <laughs> so yeah that was that was a lot of wasted money and effort on on both of our parts uh so you, you need to know what the what unit you need you need to know where it's going to go make sure it's going to fit um those are all things that that's what we do all day long um we're professionals in that and we assess the situation and we can tell you you know what what your different options are we we have price points on our softeners that will absolutely make people make competitors just cringe um because I'll sell them cheaper than they can buy them for right. uh, in some cases. But if anybody is considering getting a softener from anywhere else, at least give us a call at 877-60-WATER and, and let us know before you get it. Because most of them, there's no free returns. Uh, once you get it, you got to pay shipping. And if you've ever had to pay shipping on something that's bulky, you're, you're going to find out really quick that seven hundred dollars to ship something back like that is not an unreasonable number yeah and a lot of people are like oh my gosh i've only paid two thousand dollars for this why would it cost seven hundred in shipping well that's just the deals that they've got in their bulk on the way out they get a good deal but if you ship it back to them because you change your mind or it's not the right one now you're out the 700 bucks yeah so no matter what we will not be undersold we have the best possible products that are out there at the best price and they're sized properly and they're they're basically they're they're guaranteed to work for your application so you can't lose um we we had some some interesting questions that uh, that i was asking some of the team today um at the office and we have one person that uh, that comes in and uh, and he's a one person household and he spends about $12 a month on bath soaps. And he's got hard water. Mm. So hard water, 12 bucks. Then I've got uh, one of my office folks that has four people in the house. She spends $10 a month. So four times more people for less money than one single person. And the only real difference is the water. Mm -hmm. So we actually put softener in that house and that was a huge difference. But to really be fair, there was a third person that we asked, and there's six people in this house, and this person is spending $26 a month in soaps on hard water. Wow. So, yes, it's hard water will definitely cost you if you if you don't address it. Yeah. Uh, and then we started, you know, kind of doing a deep dive, and it's more than just a softener. Uh, I'll just say that if you're just looking – for a basic softener installed with a warranty, we can put one in, in most cases, if, for no money down, about $28 a month. Oh. Brand new. Okay. And you own it. Yeah. Now, that ranges, you know, from a basic softener all the way on up if you wanted a, a basic combination system. Like, uh, let's say you, you're on city water and you not only want to address the hardness that's coming in, but you also want to take care of the chlorine that's coming in there as well and, mm -hmm. and get a filter. We could do that with no money down as low as $56 a month. That's crazy low. It's pretty darn low. Yeah. We have a premium system, the Connecticut combination twin tank. We call it the quad system. It's a beast. It, uh, it's super efficient. Uh, it's the most efficient unit out there. It's so efficient that we can actually use it in California in most cases. Oh, wow. Yeah, and their their water restrictions are insane yeah. over there. So super efficient on salt, super efficient on water. It takes care of filtering, softening, dechlorinating, uh, all that. 
that's like $84 a month. So you can get the whole shooting match. Now, if you wanted to, the last episode, one of the last episodes, we talked about drinking water. 